Good morning. Welcome to St. Joseph the Worker Parish at Word of God Church. We especially welcome those who are vi visiting us today and those joining us via live stream on YouTube. Today is the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reminder, in keeping with CDC guidelines, face masks are to be worn over your nose and mouth at all times during our worship service. The worship aid for today's mass can be found on pages 12 and 13 of this week's bulletin. Our presiders today are Father Al, assisted by Deacon Keith. Please stand and join in singing Hail Holy Queen. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. My children, my brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on Amen. earth peace, peace to, to people you. of goodwill. We, we praise, praise you. you. We bless you. We, we adore, adore you. you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you alone are the whole of the Father. Have mercy, mercy on us, us. For, for you alone are the, are the Holy One. One. You, you alone, alone are the Lord. Lord. You, you alone are the Most High, Jesus, Jesus Christ, with the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit in the, the glory of God the Father. The Father. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with a warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain, 
and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable at my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be? but life from the dead. For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable, just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus' homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help me. It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. Anybody do a double take when you heard that this morning? Did anybody think, wow, that was kind of rude of Jesus? It's really not the Jesus that I've come to know and experience in my life, is it? In today's gospel, we encounter a very different Jesus than perhaps we are used to. We discover a Jesus who at first won't even talk to someone who comes to him pleading for help. Not help for herself, but for her daughter. We meet a Jesus who eventually calls this poor woman a dog. And what we're seeing here initially is a Jesus who was very deeply convicted of the truth of the Jewish religion, the religion that he grew up in. In this instance, he was authentically living out what he had learned as a pious Jew. We, the Jews, are the chosen people. All other nations are rejected. We don't have any dealings with those people, those people outside the covenant that God made with Abraham. So when Jesus is confronted by this woman, a Canaanite, the first enemies of the Jews as they came to the promised land, he wants to reject her, just as any pious Jew would do. And it's important at this point for us to remember what Scripture proclaims, what our church teaches, and what we profess. That Jesus is the Son of God, and Jesus is also the Son of Mary. Divine and human. Two natures. It's a mystery, these separate natures of Jesus. It's a mystery that sometimes is difficult for us to grasp. Because sometimes we tend to think, well, Jesus was divine. He should have known. He should have seen clearly that this woman needed help. He should have welcomed her with a little bit more compassion. His divinity should have known. But again, remember, Jesus was like us in everything. Everything except sin. And so like us, Jesus had to learn. Jesus had to grow. Jesus had to change. As he matured, as he began to understand the fullness of his mission, he discovered where God was leading him, where God was calling him. And so this encounter with the Canaanite woman 
is a very teachable moment for Jesus. It's a moment that the Holy Spirit uses to expand Jesus' understanding of his mission. Because for a very long time, Jesus thought his mission was simply to the chosen people, to the Jews, to Israel. But now he begins to understand his mission in a much broader way. He begins to understand that God the Father hasn't sent him just to redeem Israel. God the Father has sent him to redeem the entire world, all people, everyone. And how many times again do we read of his encounters in his ministry? His encounters which include Canaanite women, Roman centurions, Samaritans, tax collectors, prostitutes. Jesus' mission includes all, all of the lost. And my sisters and brothers, that includes you and me as well. Again, I know this is a profound mystery. Here the Son of God has to understand truth in a way that he never understood it before. He has to reconsider what he was taught. He has to reconsider what he has thought since childhood. It's an amazing mystery. The reality that Jesus can be fully God and fully human, again, except in sin. But through this dialogue with the Canaanite woman, he understands the broader mission that he's been called to. And through her persistence, a light bulb goes off. And he says, how great is your faith? How great is your faith? This woman, this traditional enemy of his people, teaches Jesus a lesson. And my brothers and sisters, that's the lesson for us this morning. As we continue on our own journeys of faith, God the Father is constantly calling us to change, to grow, to learn, to expand our horizons. Most of us ended our formal religious education after confirmation in eighth grade. How many of us would go through life with an eighth grade education in math or an eighth grade education in reading? Our faith demands that we continually learn and study and encounter Jesus through the scriptures, through the sacraments, through our church, through service to one another, opening our hearts, expanding our hearts to include not just our little faith community here, but to include everyone that we encounter. Our parish, St. Joseph the Worker, has a dubious distinction of all the churches, of all the, the uh, parishes in our diocese, we have one of the highest funeral to baptism rates in the entire diocese. We do one baptism for every five funerals. And while part of that is certainly the demographics of our community, another part of that is our failure to reach out our failure to expand our horizons. We need to be actively, actively inviting people to join our community, not pushing people away, not looking down on people because of their religion or their ethnic background or their race, their nationality, their lifestyle, or any one of those hundred other reasons that we use as failed, faulted humans to push each other away. God's love embraces all people, and we need to imitate that love, not push people away. Before all else, God the Father calls us to be one human family, enveloped by the love of God, as shown in the mission of Jesus Christ. Everyone, regardless of their background, regardless of their sins, 
regardless of whatever foibles we find annoying, everyone is a child of God, no exception. Isaiah, in our first reading, tells us what? My house, God's house, will be a house of prayer for all people. All people. He's referring to the foreigners in the land. God's house will be a house of prayer for all. And in our second reading, St. Paul reminds us that God's mercy, God's mercy is meant for all people. We cannot afford to be selective in who we extend God's love and God's mercy to. God's heart, as revealed by Jesus Christ, is a wide one. It's infinitely wide, capable of embracing immense differences. This week, God is calling us, challenging us to grow, to expand our horizons, to expand our circle of love, to expand our circle of mercy. Right now, there's a Canaanite woman outside the door of this church. She's crying out to be heard. Will you listen to her? And right now, there's a Canaanite woman outside the doors of Giant Eagle. She's begging for affirmation. Will you recognize her? And right now, there's a Canaanite woman outside the door of your own home. She is longing for the loving embrace of Jesus Christ. Will you reach out to her? Let us now pray our profession of faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, from the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. Christ and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the promise. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Once again, filled with confidence, we bring our prayers to our Father. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father Francis, our Bishop David, and our parish clergy team, let us pray to the Lord. That the Holy Spirit will guide the decisions of our lawmakers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus will heal those who are tormented by demons through the perseverance of their prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that all of us will recognize the Canaanite women in our midst and respond with love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the sick and the suffering of our parish, especially those facing surgery, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the recently deceased of our parish, Daniel Milne, Elvera DeLeo, Margaret Hoff, Eleanor Briletic, Regina D'Amico, Paul Russell Sr., Ruth Pulasco, Barbara Humenic, and Gladys Gormley Pollock, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for all living and deceased members of our parish, and for Suzanne Dyke, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, once again we ask you for the help of St. Joseph the Worker. You gave him much help that he could serve you faithfully. We ask that you give us the same help that we too may serve you faithfully and well. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my children, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By rising from the dead, he opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as, without end, we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of Lord until. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be made, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, David, and William, and William, our bishops, all the clergy, and those of us gathered around your Eucharistic table. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph the Worker, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. With the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you are already there. I unite myself wholly to you, Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to this his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.